I tried to stand upon it, and it didn't work. And I'm saying, did you look at everything there, every dot of an eye and the cross of a T there? And did you go through everything like Abraham and the worthies of old, like they went through, like they were faithful to God in their believing the Lord? They didn't just take the part of the word they wanted, the part of the word they liked. And then just stand on that and say, God, this is what you said. I'm standing on it. We stand on everything. And it is as you stand on everything, then the promise will be fulfilled. In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says in verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Have you heard that before? I said, have you heard that before? Then I'm wondering now why they brought though that son to the disciples and they tried to cast out the evil spirit and they couldn't do it. But he said, you'll have whatsoever you say. Why didn't they have it? And I'm wondering why Peter, uh, you know, could not stand. Because he said, even though all people deny you, I will not deny you. I'm wondering why he wasn't able to stand by that. After all, Jesus said, he shall have whatever you say. Our problem is we isolate verse 23. We don't go beyond that. Go beyond it. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you. For things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall. Is that the end? Verse 25. And when ye stand praying, tell me the rest. Uh, let's, let's look up here for a moment. You know, if we're going to be very sincere, here we are from all these uh, various branches of our church in the United States. Don't we have things against one another? Yes, we do. Do we ever talk about them? No, we don't. We just say, hi, how are you? And we smile, and we have all this is in the heart. And then we come in here, whatsoever we say, and we say a volume of things you can almost put in Webster's Dictionary Encyclopedia, and then we still have, we're saying and saying and saying and nothing is being done. And it's very simple, when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. When you forgive, you forget. And then you leave. You act the way. As if the person never offended you. And you live in that life. And you don't live like, you know, you know how, they, how people do here? How indirectly they pass some comments to say, hey, if you're happy, I want to puncture that happiness. I remember what you did against me. But they don't do that directly. And they say some things insinuating. Just to remind you that you have no right to be happy. Because you did this against me the other time. And I'm still going to get even with you. And then we come in here and we quote all these promises. And we say a lot of things. And nothing happens. Because we didn't go all the lanes. I'm, I'm here, you know, my, my you know, time is, uh, you know, running out. I don't mean time tonight. I mean time in general. How many years remains, I don't know. And because of that, I need to, you know, tell you everything that God is saying in the world. I don't want to come in here and just, you know, pump you up and excite you. And everybody is jumping. And then the real thing that makes the whole thing tick, we never said it. Somebody must say it. Forgive one another. If that is the only thing we do tonight, and then you just search out the person that, you know, and we know we bought you a lot of things inside, and you will avoid that one, and avoid that one. And then sometimes so we don't avoid, we try to kind of uh, put on a good face and a good smile, and we think everything is all right, and everything is not all right. Husband and wife, parents and children, members of the church and ministers. It says when you stand praying, do what? For if ye, uh, if ye have ought against any, 
that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses but if you do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses we're talking about the faithfulness of god that whenever there is any failure the failure does not come from god there is a part of the world we're not looking at and there is a part of the world we're not fulfilling and because of that lack and because of that negligence and because of that obedience in that area that's the reason why all those promises are not yes and amen to the people that are not standing on the fullness of the word of god as for our god our god is faithful i said our god is faithful it says i'm, I'm back now to first corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 god is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord i pray that that faithfulness will see in jesus name and what actually got sarah to this condition of believing that now she could say praise the lord i believe and she wasn't considering her body anymore and then she received the faith to conceive and to be able to have this son of promise we're looking at jeremiah chapters chapter 18 jeremiah chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 11 Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 11 now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I'm old after I'm wax old shall I have pleasure my Lord my husband also being old the Lord said unto Abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i have shall i of a shorty bear a child which i'm old is there anything too hard for the lord that's what changed sarah that's what changed her mind and remember the mind must be changed what you meditate on must be changed. The words of your mouth must be changed before the man is changed. Before you come to the place of believing and stand on the faith ground. On the ground that says, I take the promises of God as they are. Now I know. I'm not considering how I feel. I'm not considering who I am. I'm not considering where I've been. I'm not considering what I feel in my body. I'm considering God who has made the promises. There are anything into your heart for the lord that is what made her to have the faith she had that is what will make you to have the faith you should have and when you have it something different will happen in your life in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 32 jeremiah chapter 32 and there we're looking at verse 27 jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 behold i am the lord the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? Don't be too quick in praying. You have a need, you have a challenge, you have a problem. Before you pray, look at the size of that problem. And look at the weight of that problem. Look at the peculiarity of that problem and say, is this too hard for God? Can God do this? Has there been any other person in Bible days and in contemporary times that had a challenge like this, a problem like this, a kind of mountain like this, and God answered their prayer, and God is no respecter of persons, and can God do this when you ask that question, and you say to the question, is that a settling that, then you'll be able to pray, all right, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? The answer is not left to the opinions of men, the answer is given in verse 7. Look at verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by the great by thy great power and you have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week. 
and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ if you tarry we shall listen together once again next week and if not every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus name thank you Lord because you are the Lord that answer prayer in Jesus name we pray Amen